hello and welcome to this edition of the EV Revolution Show. My name is Kenneth Bacor, your host, as you know, and I'm here in Toronto at the Toronto Auto Show or the Canadian International Auto Show, however you want to call it. Uh, here I've got a bunch of interviews lined up, so this show is going to be basically a lot of interviews with some of the OEMs here talking about what's happened, what's coming, what, you know, what's happening now and what's coming in the future. So a few interviews that I can line up because I've done lots of vehicle coverage on, if you look at the Detroit Auto Show and the LA Auto Show, it's a lot of the same vehicles out of here. So there's not much new from the vehicles, but able to get some more intel on how things are transitioning in the electric vehicle market space, uh, specifically in Canada, as well as the US. So stay tuned, relax, hope you enjoy some of the uh, interviews and some of the insights into what's going on. And let me get right to it. So great to see everyone here again. Boy, it's been a long time. We are back at an auto show. It's a press conference. How exciting is that? We've got some great things to show you today. I want to welcome you all to the 2023 Canadian International Auto Show. We're one of the 10 biggest producers of automobiles in the world, but we don't have a Canadian car. We have Canadian cars. They're just made for other people. The seemingly simple concept that it's time for Canada to make for Canada propelled a trade association into a feat that's never been done before. But to build a concept, but not just a concept, it's a working prototype. A made in Canada with Canadian parts and systems, zero emissions concept vehicle, driven with the near mythological can-do Canadian attitude and made for Canadian drivers. This is your work, this is our project, this is a Team Canada project. More than 50 companies banding together with thousands of years of collective experience to share one dream. A Canadian conceived, engineered and manufactured zero emissions and connected vehicle. Project Arrow, on target for a zero emissions future. You like it? This morning, we're celebrating Canada. We're celebrating Canadian entrepreneurs. We're celebrating Canadian workers. But there's three numbers I'd like you to keep in mind. 50, 500, and 550. 50 because we have more than 50 companies, Canadian companies, which have contributed to this wonderful car that we have today. We have the Martin Rea, we have Volta, but we have many others from across the nation who have contributed to, to make this car the innovation, I would say the innovation center in the car industry of the future. 500, because 500 kilometers, that's what you can do with this car when we're going to go in production. And 550, because that's the number of horsepowers that you find under this hood to make sure that you go across Canada. Ladies and gentlemen, for me this morning, it's about celebrating innovation. It's about celebrating workers. It's celebrating the talent that we have in Canada. So I would say, in short, let's seize the moment. Let's be ambitious. And let's make sure that Canada leads in the car of the 21st century. With that, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for being here. Thank you for being in Toronto. This is the 50th year of the auto show we're very proud to have you with us merci tout le monde bonne journée à vous our first qualifier is the bmw i4 named the best premium ev in canada for 2023 this all-electric grand coupe exhibited high scores in both steering feel and value cementing it into the top three. Next we have the Hyundai Elantra N, Ajax choice as the best sports performance car in Canada for 2023. Ajax journalists pointed specifically to the passenger environment and the engine as two areas where this car shines. Finally, we have the Mazda 3, named the best small car in Canada for 2023. Our journalists continually rate the Mazda 3 high in both styling and quality, important aspects of any new vehicle purchase. Drum roll. The big moment. <laughs> and the winner is the BMW i4.
right, and I'm here. My first stop is the Hyundai Canada booth, and I'm here with Don Romano, President Hyundai Canada. Can't How are you, sir? Great to see you. Thank you very much. Good. Listen, I'm first of all, I want to say a big congratulations for the Ionic 5 winning Ajax EV SUV or SUV of the year. Utility of the year. Utility of the year. Vehicle of the year. That's right. Yeah. I keep changing the names, but I know. the awards are the same. It's I have still, to catch they're up still on just that. as sweet. But a big congratulations. I mean, that's Thank a big you. deal, right? Well, it's a big deal for a couple of reasons. One, I think how far we've come as a brand, mm -hmm. obviously, that, that's number one. But number two, it's an electric vehicle. Yeah. And I think when you look at the car of the year and utility vehicle of the year, both being electric, the fact that two electric vehicles won, yes. one being ours, yeah. obviously, uh, it, it just speaks volumes about where we're headed as an industry. And yeah. I, I believe that you know, if you're not involved in building electric vehicles today, you're probably not going to be in business in 10 years right. because it's all Absolutely. moving in that direction. It is. Right now, 21% of all of our vehicles are electrified. Yes. But our demand is closer to 50%. I was going to say, the demand out, uh, is outstripping supply at this point. So how, how was 2022 for, I guess, obviously you probably answered that question. You know, you've got more demand than you have product. Onyx 5, you know, World Car of the Year, I think, or World EV of the Year, lots of awards, lots of recognition, people taking interest, you know, uh, all the media, like, you know, including myself, I've heard nothing bad about the Ionic 5 product, just a fantastic, you know, all electric for people that want to get into it. Um, what, you know, what would you say, how has 2022 set you up for 2023? Well, I'd say 2000 set us up yeah. for 2023. Oh, that's true. Because yeah. it started yeah. so long yeah. ago, that's right? True, yeah. I mean, you can't just walk into it, build a car, and they will come. It's not a field of dreams, right? right? right. You, you learn as you go along. Uh, this is like our third generation, and up on the stage here, yeah, we've got the, yeah. the fifth generation yeah. and sixth. So yeah. we're constantly trying to push the envelope to figure out, okay, what's the next big thing? Mm -hmm. But uh, what 2022 showed is post-pandemic, mm -hmm. um, number one, the economy is a lot better than the press tells us about. Yes. People are, are still out, they're buying, they're excited about cars. Hey, we're here at the auto show, it's gonna be packed. Yep. So that, that's number one. Number two is just the fact that the, the commitment to lowering GHGs and being able to produce cars yes. without emissions and still have a great driving experience. And how do you see uh, 2023 shaping up? I know you guys are still gearing up manufacturing to increase your production output, increase deliveries, get these people that are on wait lists their vehicles. How do you see that rolling out for this year and into well, next year? Well, Kenneth, we just uh, broke ground in October of a 400,000 unit EV uh, plant that will be in Savannah, Georgia. Excellent. Yeah. Take uh, advantage of the RRA. We're going to do it. Yeah. You know, we're going <laughs> to yeah. have. Uh, yeah. We're going to have a, a, a plenty of capacity. Excellent. It's going to take time yeah. to ramp up, and yeah. frankly, it's probably a good thing because right now there's also still problems with supply chain. Yes. Chip manufacturing. Yeah. All those things are improving. Right. But by the time our plan opens, we should be rock and rolling. Absolutely. And I look forward to first driving the Ionic 6 in March. Uh, I'll be out there for a media event. Um, I right did see on. it in, in LA when you guys unveiled it there. So fantastic vehicle. And they just keep coming and they just keep getting better and better from you well, folks. Get ready because after the Ionic 6 comes the Ionic 7 yeah. and, and more after that. More as you after can that. see, we're looking at performance, yeah. yes. electric performance brands. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, just a great time to be in this industry. Great time to be buying a car if you're looking. Uh, we apologize right now for the, the, yeah. the limited supply, but uh, my guarantee is that it will change within the next 12 months. We're gonna, you know, we're, we're upping our production. Yep. We're building plants. We're, we're moving forward. Yeah. Well, if you've got one on reservation, leave it on <laughs> reservation. It, it's worth the wait, folks. I'm telling you, I know personal friends that have waited a year, they got it, and they absolutely, like your wife, you have to pry it out of their dead hands. Yeah, right on. They absolutely love it. Don, Kenneth, congratulations again. Thank, thank you, you very so much, much for your time. My pleasure. All right, take, take care. care. All right, I'm here at the Cadillac booth, uh, Cadillac Canada. I'm here with Mike Speranzini. He's the Managing Director, Cadillac Canada. How are you, sir? Great, Ken. Good. Thanks for taking the time to chat with me. My pleasure. Thanks for coming you know, here. My viewers know that I'm really stoked on the Lyric product. I had a chance to spend some time with it last year. Fantastic vehicle. You know, first edition was sold out probably five times over right? yeah. <laughs> for being so popular. Uh, what's your take on 2022 on, on how, you know, were you guys anticipating that kind of success for this product? Well, we were naturally excited about the vehicle and mm -hmm. consumer demand has exceeded our expectations. So we're, we're really happy with the demand that we're seeing from, from our customers. Mm -hmm. 
What's really exciting is that the vehicles are starting to arrive and mm -hmm. Canadian consumers are now taking delivery of the all new Lyric. So we've had a few deliveries in Ontario and Quebec and yep. the vehicles are arriving from coast to coast. So awesome. exciting time. Well, a great vehicle, I'm glad to see deliveries. Well, that's fantastic. Now, what I'm really stoked for is 2023 and 2024, obviously, as you continue to increase production, uh, get more uh, vehicles out there and you've got some new things for 2023. I mean, I'm standing in front of a different color. Tell us about that. Yeah, there's more and more colors coming. So for the 2024 model year, yeah. we're adding five new colors. Excellent. We're adding two new trim levels, mm -hmm. tech and sport. Okay. And in some of the color combinations, you'll be able to get a black roof. Mm -hmm. So it really creates a dramatic appearance that mm -hmm. you'd expect from Cadillac. A full panoramic sunroof. Okay new wheels, yeah. new premium leather interior. Mm -hmm. So lots of additional colors and trims and, and packaging uh, for Canadian consumers. Absolutely fantastic. And you know, the consumers that have taken delivery, obviously the majority has been in the US. What's been their initial feedback? I, I, I'm from watching some videos and stuff out there, for some you you know owners that throw it out there, they're ecstatic with their product. Is that what you're seeing? That's what we're seeing yeah. as well. And yeah. uh, we're seeing people who are super, they're, they're loving yep. that they can get a luxury EV, a true luxury vehicle, because mm -hmm. that's what the Cadillac Lyric is. It's everything you'd expect from a Cadillac mm -hmm. and more in an EV offering. Mm -hmm. um, so only hearing positives in the various blogs right. that I'm following yep. and from the consumers I've talked to. And have most of those consumers, are they existing Cadillac owners that are trying to get their feet wet into electrification or are you seeing some outside of that sphere? The, it, it, it's still early, mm -hmm. but we're seeing both Good. existing Cadillac owners okay. and we're seeing Conquest where people are looking for choice, mm -hmm. uh, where mm -hmm. they've been in the electric vehicle, uh, an electric vehicle, mm -hmm. but they want a true luxury experience now. Absolutely. And for those that want to make that leap to electrification, you guys are helping them. Uh, I understand there's some home charging credits, like either through an install or something like that. Is there anything going on in Cadillac? It, exactly. Yeah. That, mm -hmm. that for, for someone who's a first time EV um, owner, we have Charged by Cadillac, which provides uh, an in-home charger okay. um, with the when, with the purchase of the vehicle. So a level two charger, yes, basically. Yes, yeah. And then they would just have to get it installed, but you're providing the hardware for that. And right? we have a concierge service to help oh. you through the process. Okay. So we, okay. we as part of, again, the experience you would expect from Cadillac, mm -hmm. we're, we're trying to help our consumers make the whole journey with us so it's an amazing experience from end to end. Absolutely. So beyond the colors and, and the trim models, what would, what would be your final thoughts about consumers thinking about a Lyric, looking forward to this, what, you know, what would be your thoughts as far as what to look forward to for 2023 and into 2024 overall? Um, in 2023 and in 2024, look um, to enjoy seeing more and more of these vehicles on the road, mm -hmm. increased availability. There's going to be lots of good news from Cadillac as mm -hmm. the year progresses, whether it be more electric offerings. I'm trying to squeeze something, but he's pretty tight-lipped here. More, so, yeah. <laughs> more electric offerings yeah, coming, more to come. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Stay tuned. Yeah. And there's going to be lots of news on our internal combustion vehicles, yes, too. So, absolutely. But it, it's, uh, we couldn't be more excited. We've had, we've had five years of sales growth, mm -hmm. three years of record sales yes. and look to continue that trend going forward. Absolutely agree with you. So folks, if you have a reservation, you're, you're waiting for a Lyric, and you know, I, I talk to some people that have that and they're like, oh, it's still taking a long time. Listen, it's worth the wait, folks. Trust me, this is a fantastic all electric vehicle competes with everybody that's in that price point, in that class range. In fact, I would say value-wise, this offers a ton of value for at a price point that's very competitive. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Well, thanks again, Mike. Thank Pleasure you, Ken. Pleasure to chat with you. All the Take best. care. Thank you. Thank you. Great. All right, so I'm here at the Chevrolet booth, and I'm here with James Hodge. He's the brand director for Chevrolet Canada. Hey. How are you, James? Hey, good to be here. Can good talk to meet to you. you and good to talk to you. And thanks very much for taking the time out of your busy schedule. Everybody wants a piece of you today. <laughs> it's a media day. It's a frenzy here. It's a great day. It's a great day to showcase a great lineup. Absolutely. So obviously I'm here at the EV side of the Chevrolet booth um, just to kind of get your sense of how things have gone. So, you know, folks who are watching me know I'm very pro on GM. I talk a lot about GM. You guys are, are making a lot of announcements, a lot of new products coming out. So how has 2022 been for you? Was that kind of a, it, an awakening year? Boy, it was a busy year, right? Yeah. We kicked off the year at the Consumer Electronics Show, right? And mm -hmm. revealed the Silverado EV, yeah. right? Yeah. A purpose-built 
truck uh, for, for EVs, and it was just, just an outstanding success. And the reception that we got uh, with truck and tenders, right, that actually saw that we were building a truck for them. Yes. Uh, no compromise vehicle, right? right? Which has kind of been a theme for all of our Ultium-based products, right? Mm -hmm. No compromise vehicle. Yep, yep. So we kicked off the year with Silverado EV, and then we released the, the Blazer EV, mm -hmm. uh, and it was the, I was in LA for that. It, were you? Okay, yep, perfect, yep. yeah. A beautiful spot to Absolutely. reveal a vehicle, it was obviously, very right? Nice. Yep. <laughs> Um, so yeah, so Blazer EV, mid-size SUV, mm -hmm. again, still built on the Ultium platform. And then this beautiful vehicle behind us, the Equinox EV, yep. we ran it out the year uh, by revealing this one. Yes. And we're really excited about Equinox, obviously, in that we, with it, we come to the, the biggest segment of the market, the compact SUV, mm -hmm. Uh, with an electric vehicle that starts in and around $35,000. So we're pretty excited for that one. Now, 2022 was, was busy with the vehicles that we're selling as well, right? We sold a record number of Bolts, yep. uh, Bolt EV, Bolt EUV uh, last year. And that's even going through the recall stuff, like it, even exactly, with the slowdown yep, of that, through, right? Through those, mm -hmm. uh, those yep. difficulties, no question. Yep. Um, we've, been at, we've been building EVs for decades, yep. when you think about it, right? Mm -hmm. Volt, right? Yep. Spark EV, yep. uh, Bolt, e, Bolt EVs as well. The GM1, so that, the, uh, the EV1 that was ahead of its time. Yeah, yes. yes. 1969, <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, we can go back. Uh, we can go 96, back but yes. Yeah, yeah. 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 So, um, so yeah, so we've been at it for a little while, yeah. and we're excited to bring these these products uh, to market, especially as I mentioned, no compromise mm -hmm. Altium mm -hmm. uh, platforms. Absolutely, and you know, uh, I think what what if somebody's watching this for the first time and hasn't heard me do the GM pitch, right? Uh, because I do sound like a sales guy for a lot of times, but <laughs> you know, taking I, taking key market brands for you, right? Blazer's a key brand already. The Equinox already. Equinox, right. already a key brand. Like right. a lot of these are in fleets, right? Sure. Rental fleets, things like that. They're very popular vehicles, right? They, they SUV, you know, I mean, everybody's got an SUV. And to electrify them, it's a big step. Taking, you know, your, your grand pickup truck and now with the Denali on the, you know, GMC side, right? right. right. It, those are different, you know, customer bases and you got to be careful what you're doing, correct? Sure. Uh, well, we, we, we love the, the obviously the, the fact that we have an, an ICE vehicle yes. and an mm -hmm. EV for for, uh, for those intenders. Yep. I think the, one of the latest stats I saw, about 40% of our customers that are coming in and, and looking at our ICE vehicles okay. are considering an EV as Good. well. Right? Okay. So that's that's wonderful to hear. And, and now, right, we'll have a, in addition to the Bolt EV, we'll have these other entries as mm -hmm. well. Mm -hmm. Right, with Silverado, Blazer, and Equinox, we're in the three biggest segments in Canada, Absolutely. right, in the automotive yep. uh, industry. So it makes sense, right, uh, to have uh, to have vehicles for all of those uh, for all those intenders. We cover a, a big part of the market in, in doing exactly that. Right. So let's talk about 2023. Uh, you guys are ramping up production. Start, yeah. Stuff's going to start rolling out. What should consumers, both in the U.S. and Canada, expect from rollouts for some of these products? Yeah. So I think between I know you can't give specific details. Of but course, when well, you're talking yeah. general, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So uh, with Silverado EV, mm -hmm. um, you'll see in the U.S. Uh, some some early units go into fleets. Okay. So this really helps to get yep. people's head around, you know, that a mm -hmm. that a EV truck is certainly capable and a no mm -hmm. compromise vehicle for them. Well, we right? know that Hertz has helped out another manufacturer <laughs> quite a lot, right? Of course, so, yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> so they, it makes sense. They made some some hay with that announcement. Yeah. There's no question. But we're you're going to see a lot a lot of uh, WT or the okay. work truck yes. variants in the U.S. Good. initially, yep. right? Blazer EV is coming to Canada in the summer. Oh, that's soon. Okay. Yeah, okay. Oh yeah, it's coming very realize. soon, really, okay. right? So, yep. so we're excited for that. Um, and then Equinox and Silverado EVs are coming to Canada right at the end of, so of this year. So Q4, later exactly. Q4. Q4, okay. we're saying Q4 for okay. those two. Mm -hmm. So you're gonna see a lot, a lot more EVs uh, at our dealerships on Good. the road uh, very soon. We're excited, it's it's a great time. Do you, uh, yeah, that's fantastic. Industry. Do you anticipate, uh, obviously, you know, OEMs tend to come out with the with the top spec versions first, you know, RS, all-wheel drive versions, right? Sure. Or obviously, and then trickle down to L1Ts, this kind of stuff. Do you expect the same type of release for these vehicles in that with, aspect? With some of our vehicles, yeah, we, we are, as I mentioned, right, with Silverado, the work, the uh -huh. work truck will be yeah, the first one to great. go to market, yeah. right? Um, the, the Blazer and the, the Equinox will, will have, um, Different trims that'll come yep. out first, but it's not it's not the richest trim. For example, sure. Blazer EV SS comes, mm -hmm. which is the top trim, mm -hmm. the Super mm -hmm. Sport trim. Yes. It'll be a little bit later coming to market. So oh, okay. it's not always the case that it's the most expensive one okay. that comes to market uh, first. Not at all. We're excited to bring the 
the $35,000 uh, Equinox to, to market. Well, I'm glad you said the price point because that was my next question to you. So you're still holding to that that MSRP, initial MSRP of $35,000 yeah, for, there. I would assume, an L1T type of trim. Exactly, right? yeah, for the base spec. Yeah, yep. yeah and exactly. which is pretty capable, right? It'll have good range. 400 uh, kilometers. Yep. 400 plus kilometers. Yep. Yep. Um, Fast charging, I think it's 125, if I'm not mistaken. I'm trying to remember what the, there's so many numbers in my head. So 150? 150, 150? Yeah, 150. 150. So it does so about 112 kilometers in, in 10 minutes. Beautiful. Right? So yeah. I don't know about you, I've got yeah. some young kids. Yeah. I can't get them bundled up <laughs> and in the back seat of a car in 10 minutes. No, so I know. So if you think about it, that's pretty, so that's by, pretty great. By the time you right? get them unbuckled into the coffee shop and, you know, and, and get that sprinkly donut. And stuff, yep. It's a half an hour, right? It precisely. There. Yeah. Well, I'm really happy to hear that because, again, to me, uh, when I saw that announcement, and, and looked at the offering that's in that price point, I'm going like, this is really, a, truly a mass market EV. So my viewers know I did a yeah. show on that <laughs> and I've talked about that considerably. Yeah. And uh, I want to also give you something that, I, that I, I'm going to get my helper to give this to me. So if you didn't watch my early show that I picked the Equinox EV as my 2023 EV of the year. This is um, awesome. So what the award's worth, you know, whatever, uh, to me it's an important vehicle because of the transformation that it does in the industry. It really ties it into the mass market, right? At that 35K, if I if I were to go in and say, I just want the base spec, I qualify for the 5K incentive, federal incentive in Ontario, right, right. in BC, Quebec, others, I'll get Further more. Incentive, yeah. So you're in and out the door tax in with, with you know, 100 bucks down or whatever, <laughs> you know, in the low 30s. I mean, that's incredible for an EV of that capability. That's where I'm going with that. Yeah, we're right? so excited for it. And I appreciate the recognition, Ken. It's, it's, it's a wonderful vehicle. Again, I've said it a few times, yeah. no no compromise vehicle, yeah. right, from any standpoint. So really welcome, you know, folks to, to come check us out and, and, and eventually get to drive one. So excited because it's it's a wonderfully driving vehicle as well. I have right? not driven one yet. I hope to soon. Hope we'll see soon. one in the press fleet and, and get out there soon. Yeah. I appreciate yeah. that. So I'm going to give you this. Congratulations. Well, yeah, no, thank on you. This is wonderful. Me. Yeah, we're thank so you. pumped for this car. So thank you. it's great to great to see the recognition. I appreciate well, that. It's a great job you guys keep doing it. And what can we expect in 2024? Any uh, tidbits you can throw out there oh, to geez. some of my we're not supposed to talk can about I, the future, right? There's all, all I can up? say. I think right is is more is coming. Yes. This is just the start, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. We've got uh, we've got lots of plans. Obviously, the LTM platform is scalable, yep. right? So we can do a lot of things with it. Absolutely. Performance variants, for example, some some really cool stuff coming. Mm -hmm. Just wait. And don't forget the charging infrastructure, right? The the 360 charge program. Precisely. Combining that to make that uh, user end user experience yeah, uh, with, easy. With anything new, with any change, right? Consumers just need to get their head around yeah. it. There's a little bit of fear around, yeah. you know, how am I going to deal with uh, with charging, right? And yeah. I mentioned how fast it can charge at a public station. You know, we're making it easier right now. When you buy a Volt or a Bolt yeah. EV, sorry, yeah. um, we we offer ho a home charging solution along okay. with it, right? Great. Because we know many consumers, many owners are going to be perfectly fine mm -hmm. with their with their commutes or as much driving as they do on a regular basis basis to charge at home. Just yeah. It's cheaper, yeah. right? Like um, 350, 400 kilometers a day, like uh, most people aren't doing that on a regular no, basis. Course. So of that's course. more than enough, right? Precisely. So we're doing a lot of things mm -hmm. that are making it easier for, for anyone who's considering an EV to, 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 to be an adopter, right? Wh whether it be with investments, right? Yeah. Yeah. In public charging, yeah. right? Through our dealers as yeah. well, getting themselves ready. Mm -hmm. And they're adding public charging as well. A lot of a lot of a lot of ways in which we're we're making it just easier for someone to get into an EV. So yeah, again, EVs for everyone. That's our that's the the current tagline, right? And and certainly mm -hmm. with Silverado, Equinox, Bolt, and Blazer, we really do feel like we've got one for for anyone who's intending. So I feel like a kid exciting. in a candy store here, folks. <laughs> Absolutely, James. I couldn't have said it better myself. Thank you very much. Yeah, Appreciate right on. your time Thanks, Ken. and all the best to you. Yeah, it was lovely talking with you. Thank, Thank you. you. All right, so staying with GM as an entity, I'm here at the GMC booth and I'm talking to Daniela. She's the brand director for GMC or Hummer? For GMC and Buick. For GMC and Buick, okay. Correct. How are you? Good to meet you. Good to meet you as well, Ken. Thank you very much for taking the time out of your busy schedule to chat with me. So I just wanted to catch up and take a breath. You know, I, I did a lot of auto shows last year, you know, did LA, did uh, Detroit, you know, lots of stuff and, you know, the Hummer, no surprise, or maybe a surprise, kind of almost the bell of the ball at a lot of these. How was 2022 for reception for this product for you guys? Well, 20, well, we're really 
uh, bringing it to Canada in 2023. Right, but so you launched part, it last year. We so launched it. I mean, demand, we had the reveal right? and we yep. had the launch and we yep. had the reservation program yep. that, that went yep. out. Um, but really, we're going to start delivering to customers the tr the SUT, the truck, yep. and the SUV starting um, in the next couple of months. So starting from the end of the from Q2 there. So really excited because folks have been waiting for a long time. Mm -hmm. It's just such a um, halo for for the brand and. Mm -hmm. Now having SUV and, mm -hmm. and all that brings from terms of uh, you know uh, luxury and capability and versatility, yep. we're beyond excited. Yeah, you know you mentioned the SUV and, and I've talked to folks that that they're kind of more interested in that than the pickup version because of you know that adventure that the different functionality right in the SUV three rows so more capability there. Um, but you know I was just overwhelmed at the sheer number of reservations. You know I mentioned sixty thousand to you guys as a as a early North American starting point, mainly US, but mm -hmm. you know, at a vehicle that's a hundred thousand dollars, right? Let's you know Well our pricing know. hasn't been announced for Canada, so I know stay tuned. I'm just talking about US pricing. Yes, right? yeah, yeah, absolutely that's yeah. the US. But, that, I, but I would that's put phenomenal it this, though. It's right? phenomenal and I would put it this way. There is a demand for this product Absolutely. and people are willing to wait. Mm -hmm. And I think whether it's, you know, um, what you're hearing out of the US or, or what I can speak of for Canada, there is this love for GMC. Mm -hmm. And I think with what Hummer brings in terms of versatility, capability, luxury, um, even some of the, the uniqueness, like Crab Walk. I was going to, yeah. You know, Absolutely. that's a GMC exclusive. That's right. Uh, when it comes to a lot of the features that when you sit into the vehicle, I'm sure you've been exploring mm -hmm. both the vehicles. Um, there's technology in there that's really setting us apart. Mm -hmm. And what I think Hummer brings to GMC and what it can do for the brand is phenomenal. So were you surprised that you could move a almost 10,000 pound vehicle up to 60 miles an hour in three and a half seconds by electrifying it. Did that surprise you? It didn't surprise <laughs> me because I think, well, obviously, I'm, I'm part of the company, so I, I, I knew that was you know something that we were yeah. we we're definitely working towards. I would say the thing that really I love loved about getting into this vehicle is that when you get into a truck, you expect it to be a little bit noisy, mm -hmm. and it is so quiet. Mm -hmm. So it just it's it's getting used to that, and then just like just enjoying the watch to freedom, yeah. enjoying how the, the, the vehicle moves, um, and then the kind of like um, how you can really experience it. For example, you can remove the roof there, mm -hmm. you know, the kind of accessories yes. you can have. It just it depends on your lifestyle. Like you mentioned SUV versus truck. Yep. It all depends on, on kind of what your desires are. Mm -hmm. um, this definitely is a shorter wheelbase, you yep. know, but at the same time, if you have that adventure spirit and you want to go out and enjoy, you can have the truck as well. Absolutely, and you have some payload, you have some towing capabilities Absolutely. for that out, so outside. Um, so you mentioned about, uh, you know, Canadian um, coming to Canada. Uh, when do you expect, excuse me, pricing to be announced on that? And when do you think you'll start seeing some Canadian deliveries? We're looking for our uh, vehicles to be delivered at the end of Q2. Okay. Oh, and wow, that's soon, okay. Yeah and, yeah, and we'll announce pricing around the same time around as well. Around the same time, yeah. okay. Yeah. And quickly on the Denali, so I was in uh, Detroit for that reveal, which I a great truck, again. The you, Sierra, you yeah, mean, yes, uh, absolutely. The Denali EV, Sierra EV. Yes. You've got, again, a pickup truck, are loyal, it's a loyal brand, followers. How has the uptake and the excitement been since that release? I mean, if, if I thought, if I, like I mentioned about Hummer, yeah. Sierra is just even more. Yeah, okay. For us, I think you mentioned Good. it's called the Denali of EVs mm -hmm. yep. for a reason. We've, we've taken a truck that is so loved. Um, you know, we've been we've been enjoying phenomenal market share here yeah. in Canada, whether it's on the light duty or the heavy duty and the ice for us, uh, side of things. Mm -hmm. But now with, with the uh, electrification, with the Altium platform, I think we're going to definitely be dominating when it comes to, mm -hmm. to that. Okay. And the fact that now we can fully claim that GMC is the only three truck EV brand in the market. Oh, I didn't hear that one yet. Yes. Okay, <laughs> so now you've heard it here, folks. Uh, and any idea when we may see first customer ships or deliveries for the Denali or for well, the Sierra this, EVs? This vehicle is a 2024 yep. US one, yep. so mm -hmm. uh, the US is going to get a little earlier. Okay. We're, we are looking to get the 2025 yep. um, later in 2024. So, so second, there's still probably some, second half still some of time, next yeah. year kind of thing for that, but that's good to, to get the demand. Yes. Lots of functionality, you got the mid well, you got all this stuff going on, right? To when it comes it. to towing, yeah. when it comes yeah. to, and even some of the, the features that we've started off in the Hummer, so yeah. it'll also have the crab oh. walk, for example. Oh, yeah, yep. okay. Uh, final thoughts, uh, anything that we should tell viewers to look forward to from GMC for electrification? Anything I would you can say? Can I tug something out of you? <laughs> well, I'm going to repeat what, I, what yeah. I said just now, that to have GMC be the only three-truck EV brand in the market yeah. is something that we're going to lean into very much because you can see from the products that we have, 
um, we're bringing the products that consumers want and there's a demand for. Absolutely. Well, it's been a pleasure. Thank you. Thank Daniel. you, Ken. Thank you very much. Take, Take care. care. Yeah, we're going. Great. All right, continuing in the GM family, I'm here in the Buick booth and I'm speaking to Hiba. She's the national manager, a marketing manager for Buick. Did I get that right? That's correct. I only practiced it three times. <laughs> Thank you very much uh, for taking the time to talk to me. I appreciate it. Thank you. You guys are busy. So one thing I don't know a lot is the Wildcat story. You know, um, Buick's been a, a long-standing brand for GM, obviously, and this is the first kind of, you know, starting to push into full electrification for the Buick brand. Can you tell me a little bit about the genesis of the Wildcat yeah. vision and, and where you see yourself going with that? Yeah, for sure. So the Buick is actually like the visual representation for the future of Buick. Uh, so it encompasses a lot of, you know, the design cues that you will see in the future production vehicles. Mm -hmm. And that future basically starts today with the presence of the Encore GX, which we're revealing for the first time oh, okay. uh, at the Toronto Auto Show. Okay. Uh, so it depicts what the future is going to look like, as I said, from a design perspective, as well as a lot of like the technology uh, features as well that we will see in in our future products. Okay, excellent. So you're going to you, you'll be a snapshot of what is in here will be showing up on a different model shortly. Correct, exactly. A new model shortly. Okay, interesting. Um, my understanding is as well is that there's, you know, potentially design elements, engineering, you know, technology as we talked about, other elements that may, you know, help the progression into full electrics for the Buick brand, you know, utilizing the plat Veltium based platform, which is scalable, you know, you can manipulate it in many different ways, wheel base, battery sizes. Uh, so how, how do those stepping stones um, get Buick into, okay, now we have a full electric and this is what we're bringing to the table? Right, so I would say it all starts with a design story and the design language, which is very optimistic mm -hmm. and it, it mm -hmm. is a strong indicator of what our future is going to look like. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, you can see the design cues here, the remarkable design cues. It's stunning, it's a stunning the vehicle. Yeah. Exactly, uh -huh. and of course, you know, the, the new Tri Shield logo, which is on the hood of the Wildcat, uh, which will lead that journey of transformation into the next uh, Buick lineup products, which will be all electric by the end of the decade. Okay. So so you have a roadmap, a stepping stone approach to an all electric um, offering in the Buick family. Yes. When do you think the first offering all electric may hit uh, North American markets? Uh, you know, are you thinking so, within two or three years? Yeah, so of? as I said, by the end of the decade, mm -hmm. we should be all electric. Okay. We do have exciting plans and a very exciting portfolio coming up, so mm -hmm. stay tuned basically to know <laughs> more about it once we can release more information. Okay, and is, is the Wildcat going to be, or do you think it might be an actual um, production vehicle, like do we, what we see here? Will that maybe make it into production at some point? So the Wildcat is a concept. Mm -hmm. It is yep. a platform basically that includes a lot of the elements that you mm -hmm. will see in our future uh, products. Mm -hmm. uh, but for now, it is a concept. It's a concept. Yes. So there's no, no definitive plans at this point to take what we see here in some form or fashion as a two-door sport coupe concept you know, into a production vehicle. But take, as you said, design, engineering, technology, all those elements and put them into the future EVs. Exactly. Correct. Yes. Anything you want to close on as far as, you know, for, for consumers who are thinking about Buick, thinking about electrification, what they should look for over the next few years? Yeah, I mean, it is definitely a very uh, interesting transformation journey uh, for Buick, which we are all very excited about. Mm -hmm. And uh, again, like, as I said, the, the that journey started today with the launch of the Encore GX and, okay. you know, a lot of the interesting features that Everybody likes on the Wildcat is on the Encore GX, be it the design, the new fascia, the new grille, the new logo, as well as like the, the purposeful use of the technology that is inside the Encore GX. Well, I, I look forward to it, to seeing more from Buick. It's not just a brand for old guys wearing hats anymore, right? It's got a lot of youth. It's got a lot of different uh, spirit around the brand that will uh, go after the different market segment. So I wish you guys all the best, and I'll continue to watch your electrification journey, and uh, I'm excited about it. So Thank you. We all are right. extremely excited about it, too. You should be. Well, thank you very much. Thanks a lot. All right. You're welcome. Thanks. All right. Great. All right, and to wrap up the uh, Toronto Auto Show, Canadian International Auto Show, I'm here with my longtime good friend, good buddy, Francois Lafarve. 
position at Nissan again, Nissan Canada? So, what is it today? <laughs> what is it today? Senior Manager for Corporate Planning and Market Intelligence. There you go. See, I couldn't have remembered that. <laughs> I don't even know what I had for lunch today, folks. But anyway, you know, Francois is the first, I think you're the first guy that I interviewed when I started doing the shows. I think so. I think so. You're the very first. And was it here? And it was here. Yeah. And you're at the end now of the show because I just thought, bookend, let's bookend it together. Let's wrap up and let's find out what's going on with Nissan because you guys have been kind of quiet, you know, kind of sitting there just doing your, your thing. Thing, right um, you know and, and seeing what's going on so let's talk about 2022 how did the you still got you got the leaf chugging yeah, along that's right, that's how right. were things with the leaf in 2022 well it was definitely 2022 for us was for leaf and any cars yeah. that we had we had a challenge yeah, right, to yeah. get uh, production into Canada uh -huh. production to anywhere yeah so that was a challenge we did 1500 uh, just to, above uh, 1500 leaf in nice Canada, in, Canada, in Canada yeah yeah yep. good um, and uh, and we could have done a lot more but that's what we were able so to, had to, demand, to get yeah. um, mm -hmm. but the demand yes yeah, is, 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 yep. is huge yeah uh, of course we launched other cars that are not uh, yes. EVs, but yes. uh, it was a good it was a good challenge for us okay. and pushing truly pushing to get more production for, uh, for yep. Canada and, and then at the tail end um, of the year, we uh, announced and launched and talked a lot about uh, the Aria. The, the yes. Aria was announced back in July, so yeah. We'll come back to the Aria, just yeah, on sure. the Leaf. So, just for those who don't, I mean, the Leaf's a good all purpose EU, uh, BEV, right? Um, uh, again, you can do lots of things with it. Yes, it's got some older, older potentially technology in it, but it's a very valid, and from a cost perspective, it's it's one of the lowest cost uh, all electrics you can get in Canada, and it's very viable. Both the, the 40 and then the 62, right? Yeah, the, the 60. Uh, six, yep. 60 for yep. the uh, plus version. So really good cars. And how do you see the Leaf happening this year? You're still moving along with both models into the into 2023? So yeah, we're. Same as 22, yep. we're going to push as much as possible to okay. get uh, production for Canada. Yep. Um, this is uh, extremely important for us because we know that yep. our dealers are telling us, our customers are, are, are telling us yep. they're interested. Yep. So we're going to try to get more for, for uh, 2023 for sure. Excellent. So that's Excellent. that's the plan. And obviously with the IRA in the U.S., I know, that, I know we're here in Canada, but I have a lot of U.S. viewers. That is helping drive momentum because now, you know, you guys are building these in Smyrna, right? They've been yeah, building in right. the U.S. for quite some time. So that's going to really pump up demand as well, right? Exactly. That's going to be interesting to see how it's going to shift, not just for Nissan, but other manufacturers as well. Mm -hmm. um, but we're going to definitely try to maximize uh, our production Excellent. here. So, Good. Yeah. Let's talk about the Aria now. So Aria, the, the new kit on the block for you guys, yes. all electric, lots of hype. I've seen it. Uh, I'm waiting to get some seat time in that. Hopefully something will happen this year. I <laughs> oh, keep yes. my fingers it will, crossed. It will, it will. You, heard it, you heard it from this guy, it will. The marketing people aren't here. Well, the other the other ladies that I deal with, but That's anyway. why I can say anything. That's why. Nobody from Nissan here except me. Nobody so to club you on whatever you're saying. <laughs> But you know, really good reception so far on the Aria. I've seen some reviews, all been pretty positive. You know, obviously these have been in Asia for a little bit now. Europe, they've yes. been on the road. How do you see this happening in Canada and the US this year? Yeah, we sold over 65,000 Arias wow. already. Wow, okay. Um, and we just started literally at the end of January to deliver some in okay. Canada. Yeah. So it's very exciting. Okay. And yes, reception So you is have very some positive. first Canadian deliveries already? Yep. Excellent. I didn't know that. That's yeah. great news. A few, okay. uh, a few that were delivered in Quebec and Good. in Ontario. Of and, course. Yeah. Quebec, BC, you know. <laughs> anyway. A few in Ontario. No, I know. Yeah. A couple in Ontario. But, but, the, but the reception has been very positive, right? Very strong for you guys? Extremely. Because, mm -hmm. um, yes, there's a lot of competition out there. EVs. Yes. Uh, there's, uh, most of them are you know, all-wheel drive. Yep. They, they offer two batteries. We offer similar things, yep. right? But this... You look at the exterior, mm -hmm. non-polarizing. We're mm -hmm. high up, not like yep. uh, other SUVs that yep. we see that's really low. Yep. So it's very comfortable to go in and out. Mm -hmm. uh, and one of the selling points, first of all, from the outside, yes, it's really good, really nice, non-polarizing, modern design. Yep. Um, but we have, uh, if you don't want to go with the E-Force yep. uh, all-wheel drive system, it's front-wheel drive, mm -hmm. it's not rear-wheel drive. For mm -hmm. the Canadian you know, weather, yep. as we know, yep. uh, uh, it's definitely better. Yep. Um, especially if we just equipped it with a winter tire, yep. you're, you're laughing. You're right? good, yeah. Uh, but the, the huge difference with that car is when you go in mm -hmm. and you see uh, the space that you have. Yeah, there's lots of space. How it's yeah. modern yep. um, and uh, very functional. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we opt to shove the HVAC system mm -hmm. to the front, yep. right? So losing the frunk. 
mm -hmm. right? So we do not have a front casino. I understand that, yeah. Uh, so we have more space mm -hmm. uh, on the inside of the mm -hmm. car. So that's that's key thing. It's yep. modern. We got the driver-centric uh, screen and yep. buttons, mm -hmm. uh, which is key, uh, versus just shoving a big iPad in front yep. of uh, the, the dash. Mm -hmm. like for us, it was extremely important. Yeah, so, and, um, and, and all new BMS, thermal management, all that kind of stuff. Yes. All you know, cutting edge, like today's technology. Yeah, it's a very well, functional, exactly. very nice machine. I've sat in it, played with it a bit, just haven't driven it yet, but it's a lovely, lots of different choices for customers yes. in trims and configs. So uh, I'm glad to hear that you guys are getting some good pull on it. Uh, I look forward to seeing more on the roads as well of that. Um, how do things look beyond 2023? Uh, you know, what could you tell us, some of Nissan's vision from an electrification standpoint moving forward? What so, are you allowed to say? Yeah. Yeah. That's always a key question. Well, what do you I have, have to, to ask? Say, you know, uh, disclaimer, you know, <laughs> everything you listen to could not be true, but anyway. Yes. <laughs> or Frostline gets fired. Yeah, or but, no, um, we wouldn't want that. No, but it, we, we've announced uh, uh, an, another vehicle okay. uh, uh, last year, which will be built in the U.S. Okay. at our uh, Canton plant. Oh, okay, Mississippi. Ohio? Yeah. Oh, Mississippi, okay. Mississippi. Yep. Uh -huh. um, uh, so more of a, uh, uh, a sedan. Okay. So that's going to be, that's that's part of the plan. All electric? Or? Get, yeah, 100% electric. Okay. Yeah, nice. Absolutely. And of course, there's there's more, right? There's Good. more to come. Yep. Uh, and uh, super excited to see the future. We we look at the future, of course, uh, uh, up to model year 30 mm -hmm. uh, and mm -hmm. past. So it's really exciting to see that that path to, towards EV that we're going to we're gonna have in the next few years. Excellent. Uh, but it's, it's good to have th those two choices uh, and as you know, more more to come, uh, but right now uh, both of them offer really different different styles, absolutely different price, yeah. uh, different ends four, of the spectrum. Four, four batteries, yeah. <laughs> so exactly. So you got the key thing for us is giving choices, right? So it's yeah. not everybody that could uh, that have the same needs or or, uh, uh, or wallet. Uh, would be, and we definitely for need sure. to offer the options to our for customers. Sure. Any last thoughts to viewers out there um, from a Nissan perspective? Any final closing thought? Put on your sales hat. What, yeah. what plug do you want <laughs> to say? Yeah. Well, I think we're, first off, we're super excited to be back at the the auto show. Yep. Have an interview yeah, here. At I know. The show it's after really three great years. to be back. Three years. Yeah. Um, check it out. When it, and and of course, uh, test drive vehicles. Uh, go to a dealership. Uh, look at the leaf. Look will at you the have? Area. Will the dealers have demos um, of these? Uh, some will. Some will. It, it okay, all depends. It depends. Uh, because, yep. as you know, the pre-sale started last year. Yes. So to respect all our customers, it's in and out. Yep. They arrive. Yep. They get yep. PDI, and then they they run away with their beautiful Aria. Yep. So, exactly. Um, so it's going to be a little bit tough at the beginning, but it's um, it's we're going to start to have, uh, of course, more more vehicles as the the year uh, move forward. Excellent. So. Good. Well, thank you for that. Always a pleasure. No, always. You know, nice Same to catch here. up with you. We'll have to have coffee again soon. <laughs> Absolutely. And chat off camera. But thank you, sir. No, we'll thank you. We'll talk to you soon again. Thanks, Sam. All right, and that's it for this edition of the EV Revolution Show. I'm wrapping up where I started today at the Hyundai booth. Thanks very much for tuning in. Hopefully you got some good insights from some of the OEMs here about what's going on from their electrification strategies. Old guys, new guys, been a lot of fun, been a really busy day. I'm tired, I'm going home. Uh, all the stuff coming up, how to reach me, Patreon, all that stuff. You know how to do all that. Uh, check it out if you're interested. And again, thanks very much for watching. Everybody stay safe, and until the next time, I will see you when I see you. Take care and bye-bye.